location, location, location. This is the often recited mantra of salespeople who want to have better access to their customers. Finding a good location is one thing. Maximizing the potential of that location is another. What a good business location is depends on the nature of the enterprise and its chosen customer segment. Thus, finding the best location depends on the target market. After identifying the target market, potential locations must be screened according to five factors. Number one, number of customers residing or working in the area. Two, their density or the number of customers per unit area. Three, their access routes to alternative locations and their traffic count in those routes. Four, their buying behavior or where they buy, at what time, and how frequent. And finally, five, what locational features they're looking for, such as locations with parking spaces, foot access, creature comforts, and the like. After screening the locations according to those five factors, the entrepreneur must then determine the economics of the location. This means analyzing the cost, volume, price, and profit of the location. The entrepreneur should compute for the cost of buying or renting, the cost of renovating, and the cost of maintaining the location. The entrepreneur must determine the most probable volume of customers based on traffic estimates, drop-in rates, and the sales conversion ratios. The volume and mix of goods and services expected to be sold at certain assumed prices must be calculated to derive the revenue estimates. And finally, the entrepreneur must compute for the estimated profits. The entrepreneur should also compute for the cash flow requirements based on investment and financing needs, the break-even sales volume, and the expected rate of return. The final choice of a location must be based on other important criteria aside from the economics of the location. The other important criteria include image desired. Should it be upscale, middle class, or flea market attraction? Two, exact fit to target customers. Location traffic is generally or totally composed of the customers being targeted. Three, clustering or non-clustering of competitor establishments. Clustering of competitor establishments oftentimes results in drawing a bigger market to the location. Four, neighborhood conditions. This includes the aesthetics of a location, its safety levels, sanitary conditions, crime situation, etc. 5. Future area development programs. The location may not have the correct economics in the short run, but it promises larger returns in the medium or long term. And finally, 6. Fiscal and regulatory requirements. Entrepreneurs want favorable tax regimes. They also seek cities or towns that have good governance, excellent infrastructures, and great public services. Good location drivers differ from business to business, or even within different types of businesses. Major location drivers include 1. Physical proximity to the target market, 2. Customer traffic flow, 3. Industry clustering, 4. Convergence of multiple industries, 5. Population concentrations, 6. Activity hubs, seven, growth potentials, eight, business climate, and nine, cost of doing business and producing goods and services in the area. Let us tackle this one by one. For entrepreneurs, good locations are chosen on the basis of proximity to the target market. Convenience stores, service shops, churches, and schools provide short travel time 
and easy physical access. Parents send their young children to nearby schools. For college students, proximity becomes less compelling. Higher traffic flows mean higher drop-in rates for stores along a traffic route. The peaking and slackening of traffic flows are important variables in the determination of a good location. Vehicle and people traffic counts are used by gasoline stations, roadside businesses, and mall shops. For example, vehicle owners who drive to work prefer to load gas on their way home rather than on their way to work. Similar businesses co-located in a particular site draw in a bigger market crowd than if the businesses were standing alone. Industry clustering produces a synergistic effect beneficial to all competitors. Examples of industry clustering include movie houses, restaurants, and garment shops. Central business districts, commercial centers, shopping strips, and public markets magnetize multiple industries which provide one-stop shopping convenience to all customers. Urbanization creates population centers where people live Goods and services follow. The greater the number of people, the greater the number of needs and wants to be satisfied. Activity hubs, such as large schools, high-rise buildings, public parks, transportation terminals, and entertainment centers provide good location potentials for food establishments and client-specific services. Businesses are always looking for new areas to expand and grow. That is because crowded population centers are already saturated with existing providers of goods and services. Hence, the new development site will be the proverbial greener pasture for early locators. And the early locators will catch the early customers. Enterprises prefer locations that are conducive to doing business. This includes areas with high economic growth, stable political situation, effective social services, good infrastructures, cheap utilities, efficient transportation and logistics, availability of skilled labor force, low crime rates, good fiscal incentives, and trusted public officials. For industrial establishments, the more relevant criteria are those locations with the lower cost of doing business and the lower cost of producing goods and services. Hence, these industrial establishments would prefer locations outside the main population centers but with government-supplied amenities. When entering a market area, the entrepreneur should identify locations that are preferred or favored by competitors or a cluster of competitors. This should enable the entrepreneur to make a comparative analysis of customers' consumer profiles, traffic counts, and business performance for benchmarking purposes. Keen observation and documentation of these favored locations would reveal several insights on the following. Which competitors are doing better than the others and why? Which physical spots are more attractive than the others in the current business category of the entrepreneur and why? What locations contain more of the entrepreneur's preferred customer profile? What locations have larger traffic counts of the entrepreneur's target customers? What are the buying behaviors of target customers inside the premises of the competitors? How many competitors are co-located at the site and what is the performance like of the poorer performers? How long have the competitors existed in the location and how many have closed shop? The entrepreneur should determine the primary service area of any potential location where the bulk of the business revenues would be generated. There should be a more detailed analysis of the target customers in the primary service area. 
the entrepreneur is well advised to estimate the market size, to identify the customer's purchasing power, to determine the driving or walking time to the location, to examine the vehicular and traffic flow, to take note of physical barriers and traffic limitations or detours that might hamper customers from easily reaching the location. The secondary and tertiary service area of any location must be similarly analyzed. This is to gauge the potential for additional revenues and to gauge the potential for expansion. In summary, our discussion has allowed us to do a good location analysis, to determine the location drivers, to make a comparative location analysis, and to delineate the primary, secondary, and tertiary service areas.